Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. Last time we fulfilled the moon portion of this particular mission with these tourist Kerbals and we sent them off to Mars. They were on their way. But that got me to thinking that we might want to bring some of these Kerbals back from Mars eventually because we will need to resupply them constantly and that is going to be a hassle. So. This is a Mars return vessel. Initially, I was thinking of using a KSP interstellar reactor and the thermal rocket nozzle, but I decided to just go with a normal NTR and uh, supplement with ion thrusters there for most of the Delta V, actually. And we are going to launch it in three pieces on a regular SLS with Block 1B. So this is totally feasible, really, honestly. <laughs> if NASA wants to do this, go for it. Uh, but uh, here we are launching out of Cape Canaveral. There's nothing fancy about this version of SLS. I've often made variations on SLS before, but this is basically straightforward, except that the two subsequent launches, which will also be SLS, have modifications to the EUS, the upper stage, so that we can do rendezvous and docking, so they have supplementary RCS. So there is that. So off go the boosters, and all we're delivering right now is the propulsion section here. And so this is the hydrogen tank plus the nuclear thermal propulsion system that will help this Mars return vessel eventually come back from Mars. And of course the ion thrusters as well. But currently we don't have the ion thruster fuel on this segment. That will be launched next. Okay, well we had a little bit of a problem with the radiators popping out there conveniently, but fortunately not too low in the atmosphere. I don't know how they popped up when we released the nose cone, but anyway, here we go with the upper stage. And we'll leave the upper stage attached to it so that it can help out with the transfer to Mars because we want to reserve as much fuel as possible for the return portion of this. This is supposed to bring them back. A lot of that will have to be done with the ion engines. Don't, don't know what the boil-off situation with this particular stage is right now. So it's best to be safe with the ions. So next launch will be the xenon gas segment. This will give the ion engines all their delta V. Oh, I was apparently a little bit mixed up about the roll here. But we eventually got that straightened out and booster separation time. And there they go. I hope you don't get tired of SLS launches. If only they would happen more often. <laughs> anyway, uh, there goes the core. And there goes the ignition of the upper stage. And separation of the fairings coming up here. Yeah, that's a little bit awkward. But there they go. And we have to do a little bit of a tilt up to make things happen. The target, the propulsion section, well, the nuclear thermal propulsion section plus the ion engines is in a rather high orbit, but that makes it better for rendezvous anyway, so. We manage these things eventually. It takes a lot of burns, actually. The RL-10s in this case, they seem to be B2s. They're supposed to be RL-10Cs, I know. Uh, but they have 10 ignitions altogether, and I make as much use of them as I see fit. <laughs> so, yep. One of the fringe benefits of this stage. We got some nice views along the way. Ultimately, whenever constructing one of these larger spaceships in multiple pieces, it's very cinematic, I feel. But here we are, rendezvousing with the target here. This stage will be separated off, so this EUS is not going to help out with the transfer, but the next one will. So we'll have two EUSs attached, and we'll have one do its burn, and then the second one do another burn, and then finally it'll be down to the nuclear thermal propulsion system and the ion engines. Okay, so here we are docking the xenon gas, gingerly. Very tense, the music was very tense too. Uh, these are very heavy objects after all, so there we go. And then uh, this EUS deorbits, no problems there. 
you can see where I put the additional RCS thrusters. They have about the same thrust as those on the space shuttle and they use MMH and Mon 3, so nothing too special here. Nothing too fancy. And finally, the last SLS launch to support this Mars return mission. And because we're going to be doing these multiple burns with the EUSs and then the NTR, of course it will boost up, it'll take three orbits and so it'll end up in the radiation belts for some time, but of course we're not crewed. This is supposed to bring Kerbals back, not bring them there, so that's not a particular problem in this case. So separation of the core and once again another EUS ignites with simultaneous fairing separation. I don't know if that was intentional or not, but okay. You can see that the habitat that we have here for the return, first of all, is very large. It's got two floors, very roomy, and but it's based on the hydrogen tank of EUS. So it's basically the hydrogen tank with micrometeorite protection and thermal protection wrapped around it. And it's as simple as that. So and windows. So hopefully that would make things cheaper. I don't know. We thought a lot of things would make things cheaper. But alright, rendezvousing and connecting this up. Once again, another 100 ton thing. And it all looks very impressive in Earth orbit. I always like these big maneuvers in Earth orbit. Uh, well, I, I like watching them, I don't like doing them. <laughs> but, uh, well, what can we do? Unfortunately, this docking sequence does not happen in sync with the music. I really should have connected the docking ports right when the music ended right there. That would have been good, but can't have everything. Again, the music is just playing during the live streams and it's all random. It's just uh, shuffle mode in VLC media player selecting the music, so... It just happens that way sometimes, that we get the right music at the right time. Anyway, the first EUS is doing its bird tortuously because it's pushing quite a lot of things. And so it takes a long time for it to do to deliver its Delta V. It's at 3x time warp right now. Finally it's done, so that's the first bit. I decided to try to deorbit this at its apoapsis. It wouldn't be good to try to do it now, it doesn't have enough RCS. It barely has enough RCS to get that periapsis into the atmosphere below 140 kilometers. And then this has to turn around. I do that during fizz warp to save on the RCS fuel. Everything's at a premium here. And then finally this EUS burn. Precariously at the bottom of the nozzle of the nuclear thermal propulsion system. And again, using the EUSs like this in sequence is a possibility, but not really when you have crew on board because we don't want to get them stuck in the radiation belts for a long period of time. So that is the burn concluding there, and then we have to go all the way around again to start the final burn. And now the NTR plus the ion engines are only responsible for about half of the transfer to Mars. But our transfer plot is no longer as accurate as it used to be, so we're probably going to have to do a substantial correction as well. Anyway, here it goes. That is the intended Mars return vessel with, you know, sufficient food, water, and oxygen. Very important to have those. And that is our approach after the correction. So we'll be doing that correction in interplanetary space. Off it goes, and next up, I, for some reason, we, we had launched P.E.K.K.A. in the previous video, but somehow P.E.K.K.A. did not get launched or re reverted that somehow, I don't know, because I, I missed something about that. Uh, but maybe the save didn't uh, get the status of P.E.K.K.A. in orbit or something, but we have to launch him again. And so once again, one of our tourists needs to go up and Pekka was being a little bit irritating. So I decided to launch him on a Starship plus Super Heavy plus six 
SLS SRBs with Falcon 9 nose cones on top. And the main reason for this is because I didn't want to refuel Starship, but I think Pekka was agitating for Starship. So I gave Pekka a Starship, but I didn't want to refuel, you know, do all the refueling trips, so this would save on that. And up goes this abomination. I think I only uh, build abominations when people are being irritating. That's just how it is. Obviously the core, the super heavy in this case, would not be recoverable. We had to go with six-way symmetry because at this point my super heavy still had the old fins on it and six of them. Uh, the boosters go off awkwardly because they don't have the normal nose cones on top. Uh, which the little SRBs that I put as additional separatrons were positioned to take advantage of. So, yep, the nose, normal nose cones have uh, separatrons built in as well. Anyway, so here is Starship separating off from Super Heavy. Super Heavy was burned to depletion, or relative depletion. Uh, the dry mass should cover what fuel would be left behind because there is unusable fuel on board. And we end up in orbit with about 3,000 meters per second. And we need a little bit more in order to transfer to Mars, so of course we need a refueling mission. And I decided to use my Asus Depot, but fill it up with methane and oxygen instead of hydrogen and oxygen. Now with hydrogen and oxygen, because of the density of hydrogen, uh, it's about 111 tons. With methane and oxygen, because that's a lot denser, it's much heavier. So, And then we continue with the abominations. This is a super heavy heavy, which I call Delta V. Um, and But the core is not identical to the boosters, as you can see. We put vacuum engines, vacuum reactors on the core, as well as a few sea level ones in the center, at probably seven or nine. So we are just lighting the sea level ones here, though of course we know that the vacuum engines can light on the ground, but it's not efficient to do so necessarily. It depends on it depends on the thrust weight ratio of the rocket. And I think uh, even though it doesn't look like it, we have substantial thrust weight ratio with this. It's just really laggy because we've got all these engines lighting. I sincerely hope I never have to do this again, but I guess everything has to be done once. So, yep, and then we get to the point of booster separation, and these are pretty large boosters that we need to get off of here. Don't know what kind of reinforcement they would need and the core would need in order to make this happen. At that point, the vacuum engines are on, as you can see. It looks like it was seven sea level raptors in the center of them. And I decided to shut them off short in order to get the fairings off. But it was too short, so I decided to relight that stage. O otherwise, we do want to deorbit the big stage, but I wanted to reduce how much delta V we needed from the fuel depot slash fuel transfer vessel. And these are just my ED1s, I think. Uh, so methane and oxygen engines, 30 kilonewtons each for a combined 120 kilonewtons. And you can see they would have a horrible burn time if we were trying to burn all the fuel in there, but of course we're not, we're just delivering it to Starship. But we do have to make some transfer burns, rendezvous burns, so and a lot of them actually. But ultimately we do get there. So here is the approach to Starship. Now the Super Heavy Heavy could definitely carry more than this. It had more than a thousand meters per second left after we finished the burn. So I don't know, do I have to test out what its capabilities are? Have I already made that video? I must have already made that video where I test out what its actual capacity is. I hope so. <laughs> uh, anyway. So here we are docking and refueling with this and that will get substantial fuel in there. But will it be enough to not only transfer but also capture around Mars? Uh, we can obviously aero capture with the Starship, it's meant to do that. But we may need to after that adjust our orbit and of course we might need to adjust our approach initially. 
This tanker is deorbiting. There we go. Fortunately, the periapsis was fairly low to begin with. And yeah, that's not a lot of Delta V. It'll handle the transfer, but then we have about a thousand meters per second left. We're carrying quite a lot of supplies for the people around Mars in this. So the goal was to get a lot of supplies to them. But will it work? Well, we'll have to find out in another video as this gets going. And I plot its mid-course adjustment. I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.